So this is the reason why we sold gold on Friday after the NFP data got released, right? So I'm just going to break down those reasons here. It's not really something over complicated or overly simplified. Uh, but this is just one of the reasons why we sold gold uh, after the non-farm payrolls data, right? So as you can see here, I just I said I shared with the members in the group that if the US non-farm payrolls data comes out stronger than than expected, gold is the better option to short against the US dollar, right? So we already we obviously had a game plan as to what we wanted to do based on the data, right? So that that's obviously the most important thing. So you don't just go in there blindly once the market starts reacting uh, after the news gets released and then from there you, you want to create a game plan or just hop into a trade. No, you need to have a game plan before the data gets released, right? So that's the first thing. Then secondly, uh, obviously you, you all know probably that the non-farm payrolls data was not strong, right? By strong, I mean that it did not support the US dollar strengthening significantly or massively, right? So first and foremost, no unemployment rates went lower, which is good, right? Or which is really doesn't make much of a difference. But in essence, I say it's good because it does not raise the recessionary fears that we saw in the beginning of what? In the beginning of August. But then if you look at the actual non-farm payrolls in terms of the number of jobs added, the revision of the previous of the previous um, non-farm payrolls data that was actually worse, right? Because they were revised lower, and essentially non-farm payrolls data has has been revised, has been getting revised lower uh, frequently, right? So that was one of the things there. Even though the data that came out was greater than what was the, was greater than the previous one, but it was below what was expected. So the data was essentially mixed. It was essentially neutral. But here is one of the reasons why we stuck to selling gold, even because of, irregardless of the fact that the data was not as strong in terms of uh, supporting the dollar pushing higher. But because it was also not as weak as the market would expect it to be, that is one of the reasons why we we, we we stuck to our plan and we went to and we proceeded to actually sell gold, right? So starting off, I'm gonna look at the futures markets, right? So if you look at the futures chart on gold, uh, let's just look at the positions here. Yeah. We can clearly see that uh, these are the commercials, right? So the hedge funds, so on and so forth. That's the red line. The small speculators, the non-reportables, it's the green line. And then the blue line, that is the commercial, right? So what you can clearly see here, I'm just going to zoom out. This is obviously on a weekly time frame. But you can clearly see that they are massively long, right? So the, the, the trend traders, which is obviously the hedge funds, they are massively long. The last time they were this long on gold was around 2022, March 2022. That was the last time they were this extremely bullish on what? On gold, right? And obviously, if they are if they are extremely bullish, that means that what? Positions are long positions are overcrowded, right? And if long positions are overcrowded, then the chances of getting more long positions coming in and pushing prices higher are very less. So the most likely least part of resistance is for price to pull back. Number one, uh, that is just how I interpret it. But number two, price is extremely yeah, essentially price is extremely high, right? And if we and if we do expect that the Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rates on the 18th of September, and we we are expecting them to cut interest rates, but I am expecting that they cut by a modest 0.25 percent interest rate cut, uh, or that's that's the that's the percentage that they're gonna deliver in terms of the cut. That also, in terms of context, the Fed is not cutting interest rates because of a recession. They are not cutting interest rates because they are rushing to save the economy, right, from a recession. So in that regard, it means that. I am expecting that when the Fed cuts interest rates, I expect gold to push higher, right? But gold is currently sitting at the highs. And if they cut if they cut interest rates while gold is currently at the highs, the likelihood of gold pushing higher is very less. Because like I said, long positions are overcrowded. We need a breather. Uh shake shake off a be uh, uh, shake off some uh, some some people who actually continue to buy around the highs pull back a bit before we see another leg higher so longer term yes i am bullish on the on gold but for the reasons stated 
that is why i'm looking to sell gold right we are currently at the highs and long positions are overcrowded like i just explained here right so that is what we got from the what from the gold futures right and like i said if the fed is going to cut interest rates because of this inflation because inflation is going lower then in that regard that should be bullish for gold but if they were cutting rates because of a recession then we would see gold actually tank when the fed actually cuts interest rates something that we witnessed around uh let me zoom out a bit around 2020 right you remember in 2020 as you can see here what happened in 2020 that is when they were the fed the fed already the fed was cutting interest rates they started in 2019 but when when covid hit covid recession hit you can see gold actually tanked before it resumed its uptrend and started pushing higher and also around that time before gold tank you can clearly see if you look at the commercials positions they were extremely bullish at that time right so the long positions were overcrowded right so that this is just something that you can also use uh, uh in conjunction with what, I've, with what i'm just explaining right now right but you can clearly see that whenever it is because of a recession uh let's see if we can go back to 2008 whenever it is because of a recession then gold goes lower so as you can see even here gold went lower first before eventually starting to push higher 2008 why because it's a recessionary cut the fed is cutting interest rates because of a recession but if they are not cutting interest rates because of a recession but because inflation is going lower and they don't want any further weakness in the labor market then in that regard when they cut rates you can see gold start to push higher right so this is just something that i needed to emphasize on and highlight so then how did we then get to actually sell gold right so it was pretty simple right like i explained how i how i interpreted the data so we don't need this anymore because we only use this on the future chart so in terms of technical analysis uh one thing i always say is that it, it's not really much of, of 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 a differentiator yes some technical analysis strategies are more effective than others in terms of your entry but if you know the direction it doesn't really matter that much what i can say though what matters is uh this right here right so buy low sell high if there's anything that needs to be consistent with any technical analysis strategy regardless of whatever strategy it is that you're using this is the premise that should remain con con constant yeah constant not consistent but constant it is buy low and sell high whatever it is that you do you always selling high selling at a premium and you buying at a discount so in this regard it's pretty obvious that the high point because uh, this is the four hour chart so as you can see this was wednesday thursday friday so definitely friday where price was on gold on friday before nfp or let's say around the non-farm payrolls data getting released it was essentially high to where price was on wednesday right to where price was on tuesday right that is essentially marks the or this this then respects this premise of me actually what selling high or selling at a high price so then now in terms of your entry you could have used this as your as your supply this four hour uh let me draw this properly so this four hour level that we have right here you could have used that as your supply this four hour level that we have right here and price got back to it or you could have used your daily but the key important thing uh, you could have used this level right here as a supply on the daily but the key important thing is that you are selling high for me that is what matters most whatever technical analysis strategy you use doesn't really matter that much to me but as long as you sell high and you buy low if that is the objective then you are most likely to get better entries and uh, get better risk to reward right so this is essentially the level that i used and then when price got to it after because the non-farm payrolls data got released uh let's go to the one hour so it was this candle here that sort of worked higher and then pushed back down right so when that happened obviously like i said it was part of the pre pre-game plan before the data got released that i'll be looking to actually go short right uh if price actually dips into this level right and uh that that was one of the of the game plans but also if the data is strong right but in this case the data was not really that strong neither was the data very negative right so it was neutral data but i felt that since positions long positions are overcrowded on gold and if the fed is going to cut interest rates and gold is going to push higher then gold needs to drop first we need a pullback in gold we are due for a pullback in gold 
so when price actually got to this level and started to wake here uh, after that because it, it's exactly at this candle right 1430 uh, south african time or gmt plus two when the non-farm payrolls data got released we saw this what this sort of spike lower and then a spike higher and the candle closed higher so this rejection saw the next candle dip into the level again and then sort of reject as well and then obviously i took a short position uh once that had once that happened right so this is this short position that i have right here so i had two sell positions obviously i've closed one because this was just based on the news or i used the news as a catalyst let me say that it was not necessarily based on the news it was based on what i uh, what i explained based on the futures markets the positioning but i just used the news as a catalyst right and that is why i went short so i had two sell positions i've obviously closed one and the remaining one i've just moved it to break even right so this was just to explain to you how we actually got to uh sell or got get ourselves into a sell position on uh on gold right so yeah that's that's essentially what i wanted to share with everyone uh with regards to the position that we had on friday right and if you want to learn more uh obviously join the telegram group we do have a free telegram group just click the first link in the description uh if you if you want to learn more in terms of getting more guidance on how to take such such trades or how to even take some swing trades that we have because we do have a, a, some swing trades that are currently running we do have a buy 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 positions on silver uh, that are currently running right so we're still holding those buy positions on silver so if you just want to know more about that um you can click the second link which will give you more info on the 12th on the on the fundamental analysis mastery challenge that we have where you obviously get to learn more in depth about this process that we use and obviously it will enable you to get to that level of uh, of of um proficiency in your trading where you no longer a slave to the market you no longer clueless but you understand what you're doing you understand a process that you are applying in the market so it gives you that ability to have a clear concise process that you follow day in day out to give you what to give you profitable trades right not every single trade is obviously going to be a winning trade but you are going to be profitable at the end in a longer in a longer in the longer run right or in a longer term perspective so if you want to learn more about that like i said click the link in the second click, click click the second link in the description and if you like the video as always share the video with people who you feel might benefit from it and also do not forget to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.